Hello guys and welcome to Programmerist. In today's episode I'm gonna talk about the difference of two Agile methodologies, the Scrum and the Kanban. I'm not gonna talk about each of them uh, individually, uh, explaining how they work, uh, what are their principles, uh, what you need to do to implement them. Uh, you can read about it in uh, many many articles around the web. Uh, but I will talk about a few differences uh, that I think uh, that are very important. You can choose to agree with me or disagree with me and to take whatever you want from my video. Before we start comparing them, uh, let's just say what are the main principles and the main common things between the Kanban and the Scrum methodologies. Both of them are agile methodologies to develop software. Both of them use and rely on estimation of work. They share a common goal, which is to make the software development as agile and quickly adjusting to changes from user perspective, meaning whenever a user wants something, those methodologies want to give it to the user as fast as possible and making the software more flexible to changes. They both have very big value on improving with process Meaning, uh, whenever you go uh, <clears throat> further and further with developing software, uh, your team should improve how they do it and both make uh, the work process very transparent both to the team and to the management, uh, showing what is the progress of the current task uh, which the team is uh, doing. I'm sure there are many more similarities in between those methodologies and you can feel free to comment about them uh, but from now on I will uh, concentrate on the differences between them. So the first difference that I want to, to mention is scheduling. Scrum is very based on scheduling things. Uh, you put dates on when you release the software, you put dates on uh, when you do the retrospective which is something that the team does to improve their development process and you put uh, dates on plannings, which are the things that the team does. Uh, the team gives story points, uh, we, meaning something like weights on the tasks they need to do. And it is very, very scheduled, like uh, once in uh, every two weeks, I don't know, something like this, two, three, four weeks, depending on the team, uh, they sit and uh, do a retrospective or deliver their work. Common, on the other hand, uh, you don't really have any schedules. You simply work and deliver whenever you want and improve whenever you want. Uh, there is no uh, deadline you need to meet uh, every time. Uh, of course, there are many deadlines which the management can put in the long term. I don't know, like uh, one every uh, once every three four months, you need to deliver a big uh, load of tasks and. Uh, till then you need to do many tasks but this is very long-term schedule and it is uh, very different from Scrum which you, where you have very short uh, bursts of work and it is very very predetermined when you work and when you deliver. Because of this scheduling uh, it is very common in Scrum to see a very high commitment to the given sprint, to the given uh, arrangement of tasks you need to do for the current sprint uh, so the commitment in Scrum is very very high uh, where in Kanban because of how you work you commit only to the task you're taken because you do not know uh, the next task which you didn't take uh, it can change okay it's uh, by the time you finish the task you're working on now the next task can change because, uh, I don't know, many th things happened and the management decided that the next important task is not the task that was there and it changed. So you commit only to the tasks you're taking now, you're doing now, where in Scrum you commit to the tasks for the next two, three, four weeks, uh, depending on the length of the uh, sprint. Another difference which is not very different but it has a little bit of difference so I should mention it is uh, the flexibility of the team to changes so because Scrum is made of sprints and the sprint length is typically between two and four weeks uh, 
It means that if something changes, if there is some unexpected work, ideally uh, you can put it uh, inside the, uh, the next task of the team only after the sprint and so you're flexible as the same length of your sprint length. So meaning if your sprint length is like four weeks, which is approximately a month, it means that only once a month you can react to changes. Uh, so if, for example, you've been working for a week and you have three weeks left of the sprint and something changed and uh, the management decided it is it wants a new feature, it can put it to the task, of, uh, to the team to do it only after the sprint ends, only after three weeks. Where in Kanban, because it works like a queue of tasks, which the team takes uh, every single time it finishes a task, it takes another task from the queue. So all the management need to do is to put the new task it uh, now wants to be done at the top of the queue. And now the team, uh, when once it finishes this current task, it will take the next task, the, the, the new task that the management wanted. So the, the flexibility of the team is now as the length of the task they're doing, uh, which depends on the task, but it's usually uh, a few days. Okay, so uh, Kanban is typically more flexible to changes than Scrum. Another quite uh, big difference between Scrum and Kanban is the team focus on uh, the tasks they do. So, in Scrum, the team focuses on the whole sprint together and ideally you want the sprint tasks to be uh, as much similar and as much on the same topic to make the, fo the team more focused, but it can be very difficult to do so. So, <coughs> uh, the team has a lot of tasks it has to do in the current sprint and there is no limitations on how you do it. Okay, so as long as you finish all the tasks by the end of the sprint, so all the team members can do whatever they want uh, on the tasks. They can take, uh, each of the team members can take uh, one or two or three tasks to do simultaneously and uh, each task can have multiple steps in the process like developing, developing testing, uh, I don't know, uh, doing a regression test, doing uh, creating a test suit for the new task uh, and many other things, integration, uh, integration with uh, another team. So all of these things can be done by, all, uh, by the team members simultaneously, uh, which, is, uh, which can be thought also as a good thing. But because I'm uh, here talking about focus, it is actually not quite good because the team is very not focused on the task where in Kanban, uh, the team is very focused on the current task they're working. Uh, so they can have a few tasks they're working on, but because of how uh, Kanban works with the work in progress, the WIP, uh, it limits the number of tasks that can be in process in every single step. So for example, if uh, all of the developers want to develop new things and they develop, develop, develop and move the task to be tested, uh, to be uh, QA tested and now the QA and uh, the number of tasks inside a QA is very very big uh, because of how Kanban works uh, now all the programmers need to go and help the QA teams to to make the testing pile of the tasks uh, smaller uh, because it bottlenecks the progress of all the tasks uh, so uh, it is the number of uh, concurrent tasks that are in progress. It is very limited uh, and the team stays more focused on the current tasks they're working on. Now, because of this, another ch difference between Scrum and Kanban is the team. Okay, the people who build the team. Because in Scrum, you can uh, do all the development tasks parallelly and you can finish all the developing tasks and throw all the work to the QA team and it doesn't matter how big the pile of the QA team as long as they finish it by the end of the sprint. Uh, it is very common to see Q, uh, teams in Scrum which are made of developers, uh, QA people and I don't know, DB people and many other people which have their own work 
and the work doesn't wear mixes uh, between the people. Wearing Kanban because of the whip, because of the limitation of the number of tasks of the same task, uh, you cannot have too many uh, development tasks simultaneously or uh, I don't know testing uh, tasks or uh, I don't know uh, database tasks. So once uh, every a few days, the team members have to focus on different kind of tasks. So all the team members have to be able to do all of the things. Uh, for example, uh, if someone is uh, doesn't know how to develop, it will be very difficult for the team to manage with Kanban when the load of the, on the developing tasks is very high. So most of the team needs to be built from people who are multidisciplinary and can do all of the things the team requires to do. As I said before, both Scrum and Kanban uh, are focused on improving the team, uh, the team process of development software. Uh, but there is a difference on how they do it. In Scrum, there is a scheduled meeting every end of the sprint, which is called a retrospective, where you sit with the team and you look at the past sprint and you see what you did good, what you did bad, what you did, uh, I don't know, medium, and you decide what to, uh, how to improve and, uh, in the next sprint, uh, and so on. And uh, the process goes on and on and on. So it is very built into the Scrum process. Uh, so Scrum makes you improve. Where in Kanban, uh, there is no such uh, predetermined meeting and you're encouraged to improve uh, within the work itself. Meaning if you see that uh, regarding to the work in progress, that it is uh, that you put uh, too small work in progress limit on the development uh, because I don't know uh, you did it when you were only a team of three developers and now you're a team of five developers and you need to make it bigger you're encouraged to to notice it and to change it or if you have uh, I don't know a poor testing uh, suit and you need to to make it better you're encouraged to to see it while you work and talk with the team and improve it while you work. So because there is no scheduled time, uh, teams that do not think about it all the time, uh, they can miss it, they can miss the opportunity to improve. Uh, so uh, Scrum gives it boundaries, gives it time and makes you improve, where Kanban is more uh, relies on the team itself to notice that something is bad while they work, which can be sometimes hard when you're focused on the work itself. Now, another change in between Scrum and Kanban is dealing with change. And I don't mean by dealing with change the ability to, to take change uh, and uh, make the work go towards the change of work. I mean about the feeling people have when they have something changed beneath their feet. For example, if you're working in Scrum and you're focused on a uh, one type of work, I don't know, your sprint is built around a big feature that you need to uh, deliver at the end of the sprint, and now in the middle of the sprint, the management comes and decides that this feature is less important than the next feature and you need to break your sprint. Uh, from my experience, it can be hard on the team, it can be hard on the on the people inside of the team and they can take it actually not quite good because they were very focused and now uh, they're broken for a few days and they need to, to change their focus uh, to change their mindset uh, and start a new uh, different kind of process towards the new feature of the management we're in Kanban because all of the work is based on the change and that the next task is really unknown, you're getting that feeling that uh, you're, you're not focusing too much uh, on the uh, future, you're focusing on the now. So because of this, uh, you sometimes don't even notice the changes the management does in the next tasks and you take it way easier and uh, there is less uh, stress on people when things change. And the final thing that I want to talk about is work pace, which is very, very different between Scrum and Kanban. Uh, in Scrum, you work in sprints, 
which are short bursts of work and you really feel that you run a sprint, a quick run uh, and by the end of the sprint you do feel exhausted sometimes. And after the sprint you have uh, one or two days of relaxation, of easy work and then another sprint. So uh, after a few months of work like this you start feeling, well from my experience I started feeling exhausted and um, I needed some kind of break, some kind of longer period time of uh, relaxation, uh, easy work uh, or holiday or something and it is very tiring to work like this for a long time uh, you can think of it as running sprints, uh, short uh, distances uh, for, uh, for a long period of time it is very very difficult to keep up with this pace for me uh, but when you look at Kanban, uh, you, I compare it to running a marathon. It is, uh, you constantly need to think about how you run and how you need to run not too slowly, so uh, you do keep up with the work, but not too fast, so you will finish this marathon, this long, long run. And with time you find your pace uh, and you, you can continue it for quite a long period of time uh, because you are not exhausting yourself every month or so uh, and you're working continuously uh, on the work with continuous pace uh, of course there are times when the, there is some kind of uh, big uh, management decision which involves uh, delivering a feature to an important client within a short period of time but they do not come very often and uh, you do feel like you're working uh, in not very stressful environment and it makes much easier to work this way for a long period of time. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of other differences between Scrum and Kanban uh, that I forgot to mention, but those were the main differences that I thought of that are very important for you uh, to think about when you uh, decide to choose between Scrum and Kanban uh, when you think about changing from one to another you need to think how your team is built and what fits your team you can try one of them and see if it works uh, for a few months and uh, it is very depend it very depends on the team and the management and all the process how it works there is no easy solution for it there is no like, like checkbox if your team is ABC and your management is DEF and your product is GHI, so you need to make uh, you you need to take the Scrum approach, uh, and otherwise you need to take the Kanban approach. Uh, where, well, maybe there is something like this, but I'm not really sure there is. Uh, and if there is, I'm not really sure it really works that well, that well, uh, because. Uh, it, as I said before, it really really depends uh, on the team and sometimes you don't really even know how your team and you will react to uh, some kind of methodology. As I said before, I didn't mention all the differences uh, and so I encourage you, if I miss something, to leave a comment and uh, share your thoughts about this uh, to other universe so they can read and uh, make a decision about going towards Scrum and Kanban more smart, uh, more smart decision. And if you work in some kind of methodology, Scrum, Kanban, or even Waterfall, or some mix of them, uh, I heard about Scrumban, uh, which mixes Scrum and Kanban together, and something that tries to make uh, Scrum from Waterfall and mixes it together. Like the long process is more like waterfally, but every small process inside the development is scrum. So there are many, many possibilities to mix between them. Uh, so leave a comment and explain how you work and how, what you like about it, what you hate about it, so other people can learn from it. You have watched an episode about the difference of scrum and Kanban. 
Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. If you want to watch more programming videos and you trust YouTube to know what you really want, you can click over here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.